Hey everybody, welcome to the real United States and welcome again to downtown Washington, D.C. Now, for those of you who don't recognize this iconic building behind me, this is the Watergate Complex. Often we say the Watergate Hotel, but this is actually the Watergate Complex. It covers over 10 acres and is made up of numerous buildings, which over the years have been split off and sold and now belongs to numerous owners, depending on the business. There are, there's a hotel, there's long-term living here, there's uh, shops, there's office buildings, there's an entertainment complex in here too, I believe. There is a lot of different business that's transacted in the Watergate complex. But in American culture, those of us who have got a few years on us, we'll always call this the Watergate Hotel. Now, if you are in your mid-50s, probably not much younger than that, you'd have to be able to remember 1972 relatively clearly. The Watergate Hotel at that time housed the Democratic National Committee headquarters. It didn't have its own facility as it does now and you've seen in previous episodes that we've done, both the Republican and Democratic National Committees have their own facilities. But at that time, that was housed here on one of the floors of the Watergate Hotel. Well, members of then President Nixon's committee to re-elect the president broke into the DNC headquarters and also were involved in wiretapping. Something which has been in the news here in the United States a lot recently. Be that as it may, they were eventually caught, found guilty, and over 40 people, I believe, maybe it was 49, the number doesn't, isn't springing to mind, were eventually found guilty of these acts and imprisoned or fined or whatever. But it led to a scandal that was so great it became a constitutional crisis. The president was, it was an act of impeachment. And before he could actually be impeached and then tried, because that's what an act of impeachment is, it's a motion to try the president, it's not a removal. Um, the president resigned in, on August 9th of 1974. The vice president, Spiro Agnew, had resigned sometime earlier for different reasons. And the Senate Majority Whip, Gerald R. Ford, was nominated and confirmed by the Senate as the Vice President. When Nixon resigned, Gerald R. Ford became the President of the United States because he was the sitting Vice President and became the first and only President of the United States never elected in a general election. In September, September 8th, almost exactly one month after Nixon resigned, President Ford pardoned Nixon, the presidential pardon, and of course the nation came unhinged. But what Ford was trying to do was trying to get the nation to heal, put it behind them, try to get everything straightened out, and move forward. So whether you think that was a good thing or a bad thing, it's, it's up to you, I suppose. But he was, I think Ford was making a genuine effort to try to get the nation to heal and to come back together and move forward. So anyway, that is usually what we think of when we see this iconic building, sadly. But since that time, the building has been bought and sold numerous times. It was refurbished. In 2009, it was closed. And it stayed closed until 2016. I'm sorry, it was 2007 that it was closed. Yeah, and it stayed closed for nine years. It didn't reopen again until last year in 2016. Completely refurbished, something to the order of $125 million or euros, I'm not sure which, but it was a whole big pile of money. So we're gonna say $125 million to do this refurbishment. And I guess it's all been completely re refurbished and redone. Um, I understand that the main staircase, I guess, is the same, but pretty much the entire thing has been redone and it took them nine years to do that. So here it is in all its glory now, full operation here in downtown Washington, D.C. 
So for those of you maybe that remember this, now in our language, this affected actually the American language. And yes, we do call it the American language, even though we often refer to it as English. It is different than British English. The entire thing crept into our language. So now, it is, uh, anything that has a suffix gate on it has become synonymous with political scandal, at the very least, if not political wrongdoing or political corruption, but certainly with scandal, generally political scandal, sometimes other scandals are called a whatever gate. Um, so the whole thing, the name of this, part of it crept into the very language of the United States in the early 1970s and persists to this day. And there is a whole list of scandals that are now gates. So I won't go into them. It's not really material for this video, but that's how significant this event was in our history. And it consumed the American public's attention for the couple of years that the whole thing was going on from 1972 through 1974. So that is the Watergate Hotel, folks. I hope you've enjoyed this short visit here. If you've got questions or comments, I'll do what I can to answer them. Please leave them in the comments section below. I love hearing from all of you. I try to get back to everybody I can. If you're new here, hey, pick subscribe. Come along for the adventure. we got lots more to show you. And as always, thank you for watching.